Hey everybody, Conrad here from 8DO, and today I am really excited to be here with Kate. No. Of course, I'm not with Kate in person. I am talking about our new updated Kate library from our Forgotten Voices series of solo vocals. So what we're going to do is go through the patches that come with the library, and then we're going to go see how you can use it in the context of an entire piece. So let's jump right in. Right now, I have loaded up the Kate songs patch, and what this is is a series of songs, each with their own phrases in them. And you can see right here, these are all the songs. If you look at the keyboard, when I go through all of them, you see that they all contain their own set of phrases, and there are a lot of them per song. And this isn't all the songs we recorded. If you click on the arrows here, there are actually even more songs. <laughs> And they range from the really soft and peaceful to the more loud and aggressive phrases. And that just means that it can fit in the context of every piece. It's not limited to only a certain type of song. So next up, let's go to the chants. And this is a similar thing where you can click through the different chants and you'll see all the different phrases they have. And once again, Click on the little arrow here, there are even more. have a collection of rhythmic chants and I think you can already hear how that would work in a piece of music you can already feel the groove just by holding down one key We also recorded more than just chants and songs. We actually also recorded some mouth noises. And actually something that's really fun to do with this uh, is to use some of these effects. And we're also going to use the effects in the back page, which are tied to these. These are just quick hand controls to them. And what I'm going to do is use some delay. I'm going to have them panned hard left and hard right. And let's bring the delay mix up. And when I hit one... That's just a really cool sound. And the thing with that is that you can see this library isn't just focused solely on doing the solo vocal phrases. You can do a ton of different things with it. I mean, using this patch, you can already hear how I can make really great percussive elements out of these little phrases. <laughs> We also have a ton of ambiences that we recorded. Which are just very unique textures that you can use underneath the phrases or underneath anything in a piece. And there are, once again, you see those arrows there. I mean, just look at the amount of ambiences we have here. Uh, 
And in fact, we have so many ambiences, we actually have a second patch of them. With two pages again. <laughs> Now what we also did is for the songs and chants, and rhythmic chants, we have Time Machine Pro versions. And we recorded all these phrases free tempo, and that gives them that really organic, natural sound. But with these Time Machine Pro patches, you might be concerned that a chant doesn't fit the tempo of your piece. So when I use one of these patches, what I can actually do is use the pitch bend to change the speed of these phrases. So here I have the songs loaded, and if I hold down one key, there's the original tempo that we recorded it at, or that the original free tempo she sang it at. If I move the pitch bend all the way down, I'm going to move it to the extremes, so it's all the way down now. If I play that same key, you're going to hear that the phrase has slowed down. And if I move it all the way up, you're going to hear that it has sped up. So when you're writing, you can just move the pitch bend to the right spot. And you can have it fit whatever you're writing. So now let's take a look at using this library in the context of an entire piece. Okay, so I've got a small little piece here that I've written using the Kate library to really help make it stand out. And what I'm actually gonna do is mute all of the stuff I used Kate for. And we're just gonna go ahead and listen to a bit of it without Kate. Okay, so not awful, but it's clearly lacking some character. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's build this from the ground up. I'm going to add some of these ambiences. And you're going to hear that these just add a lot of character. So I'm going to focus on the ambiences in the middle here. When we got to this particular section, it sounded a bit empty. It needed something. And we could also smooth out the transition over here. So. Let's go ahead and listen to the ambiences used there, and you'll see just how much character they brought out. They really added a lot to these sections. Listen to that again without the ambiences. You can hear that it was definitely missing something there. Next up, I used the mouth noises, and this was to add some percussive variety to it. What I'm going to do is solo the mouth noises. I'll start right here so you can hear what they're doing. So you can hear they're sort of subdued in the back, they're not this forward featured thing. And the reason for that, they're augmenting what I have going on down here with the electronic drums. So let's solo just those drums. But 
when I add Kate, these drums stand out more. They don't sound so much like stock library electronic drums. You can hear how certain parts are really accented without having to do a rough snare hit and there's more breath between them. Let's listen to it one more time. It just really stands out. We'll listen to it without and with. And now let's add it back in. Okay, so now everything is sounding pretty good, sounding much better, but we're still missing something. This whole song is pretty much based on a drone. And of course I've added some percussion, some of those ambiences. there still isn't really anything melodic to hook yourself onto. And that's where all these songs and chants just really help make this track just pop. So I'm going to unmute all of them. And now I'm going to play this piece from the beginning. And you're going to hear just how much more life this has. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let Kate take over. So this was Connor from 8 Dio. And here's Kate. Mm -hmm. 